Hi everyone, Professor Gustin here, and I will be teaching microbiology lab and lecture online this semester. I'm glad to have you in the class. If you're a little bit nervous about getting started, my job is to keep you from being confused and help you not be nervous. You're not alone. You have lots of other classmates that are in the same position as you are, and um, I do my best to keep you on track. So I am a real person. I do have an office. And so you can find me, you can talk to me, you can email me. And if you're having problems, um, I will respond to you. So um, let's see, the first thing I, I want to do is, let's see, this will be an asynchronous class. And what that means is you will be supplied with weekly assignments and you can do those assignments any time during the week as long as everything is done by the due date. And I'll show you where the due dates are. Um, the course is designed in modules and you'll see that I have the modules over here on the side. And um, you see they're divided into weeks. So this week is the only week you're going to be dipping into multiple modules. You're going to do start here syllabus and week one. But every other week, you'll be going by that particular week and doing the materials in there. And they're set up in a linear way, so you're just going to follow the, the links down here in Brightspace. I'll show you that in, in, um, in, the, in another video. So the, uh, the other thing is, um, just a general thing about due dates. I know a lot of people get concerned about how much time do you have to take things and will it fit into your schedule. And you will see on the syllabus in the next video that um, ha the due dates for the first half of the semester are on Sunday, Sundays at 11.59 p.m., one minute before midnight. So up until, up through week eight, um, or I think it's up through week seven actually, the, you will have the due dates will be Sunday nights. So you'll have all week long. In fact, you'll have two weekends to work on it. I post everything on a Friday. You'll have a weekend, a whole week, and another weekend, and everything's due Sunday night. The second half of the week, because we have this semester where we have two partial weeks with, um, with days off, instead of like a week long break, we have two half breaks. And so I had to adjust the syllabus. So I'm going to post the materials on the Friday, just like I always do. You'll have a week to work on it. But those, um, the second half of the semester, the assignments won't be due until Tuesday after that second semester and you'll, after that second weekend. And you'll understand why when you look at the syllabus. So the assignments are all going to be due either Sunday night or Tuesday night, depending on which week you're working on them. Um, Let's see. The I just want to and you know just thinking about that with due dates and time and all that. Um, I want you to be aware that I designed this course based on my based on a standard microbiology live lecture lab course. And in a live lecture lab course, there's three hours of lecture and three hours of lab a week. So when you're working on an online class, you've got to assume there's probably going to be about six hours of materials that I've designed that will take you about six hours to get through. That doesn't include the time that you would spend studying or working on lab reports, um, doing things like that. So uh, maybe reading the book, those kinds of things. So make sure you allot yourself, you know, 15 or so hours a week or, or more, depending on your kind of, um, for how much, how long it takes you to absorb things. Um, to do this course. It's going to take you a lot of time and it is, it's going to be really hard if you wait to the last minute. If you're waiting to the last minute, you're not going to remember the content. I highly recommend making yourself a weekly schedule of when am I going to work on microbiology. I also recommend that you start early in the week. So if you're struggling, you have time to ask questions or get in touch with me or do what it takes to, to get um, your understanding. Let's see. Um, so I have on here, here, here's the, you found me here in this video. And then, oh, and notice that, that the link right there says video. And right here is the McGraw-Hill Connect link. And it says external learning to tool. McGraw-Hill Connect is the, the materials we're going to use for the online resources for this course. And you, you can use this link right here to get there. Um, in fact, you'll probably use this link to register for McGraw-Hill Connect and get yourself linked into the course. 
But, um, and I think you have to, if you're wondering what books and all you need for all your courses, you can go to the Barnes and Noble um, Corning link here. You'll only need to go to this once as you're um, purchasing your, your books and all that. But this will get you to the McGraw-Hill Connect, and that's where the all the resources that we'll use in this course. Um, notice this says external learning tool. That, that um, any link in this whole course that I say has external learning tool, every one of them will bring you to this connect site. So you don't need to come back to this one necessarily. You can go to the ones that are in the weekly modules. Let's see, in the McGraw-Hill Connect, when you get that, it will come with an ebook. It will, and it will also come with all the virtual labs and all the um, lecture assignments that, that we do. And so a lot of people get, you know, they kind of aren't very used to online classes and think, oh, well, I need a hard copy of the book. But what you're going to find is the ebooks that they're coming out with now are a lot more user friendly than they used to be. And reading it on the computer um, is a lot easier than it used to be. In fact, the what I do in the course is I make highlights in the sections that you should read in that book. So when you go to the ebook in your McGraw-Hill Connect links, you'll be able to see areas that are highlighted. You don't have to read the entire book, but I have areas that are highlighted that recommend um, areas for you to read. And if you need a little more background, you can read some other parts too. But I highly recommend using the ebook, and that'll help you a lot in this course. Let's see. I, one big thing I want to ask of you is if you are a person that gets started early in the week, or any time, but those people that get started early in the week, I really count on you because um, sometimes I set up a link and it's not really linked, or I think I opened it and it's not really opened, or I have the due date wrong, or something's um, crazy about it. And I need you guys to let me know when you find something that's going on that doesn't work. I I have to recreate like. Uh, when I, I made this course originally, and then every semester the course, I can roll it over, but I have to go back and recreate a lot of these links, change the due dates, um, edit assignments, edit things. And so there's a lot of clicking and a lot of changing dates and a lot of making corrections and things like that, changing points and all those kind of things every semester. There can be a mistake. It's almost impossible for me not to make a mistake based on statistics. So um, please let me know if there's anything that's not working in this course. If there's some kind of, you know, you click on it and it's not opening, let me know. The sooner you let me know, the sooner I can fix it so I, um, everybody else doesn't have a problem. So it's you, you folks that get started early. I really, really count on you to help me out. Don't just assume, oh, well, I'll just, I just won't worry about that. She'll fix it later because it's going to impact a lot more students. So thank you ahead of time for anybody who's willing to email me when you find something that's not working. Meanwhile, oh, I guess the last thing I want to point out, and I'm going to say this again in another video because it's so important. You need a computer for this class, obviously. You need to have a webcam um, that has audio and visual, and, um, and it can't be a Chromebook when you're taking exams. You can use a Chromebook for the course exclusive of the exams. We have lecture exams and lab exams called practicals. For the lecture and lecture exams and lab practicals, they are proctored. And we use a computer pro we use, we use software called Respondus. You might have used it in another class. Respondus does not work on Chromebooks. And you can try it and it's going to make you crazy and it's going to cause you all sorts of problems. So I'm going to tell you right now, unless they change something big, and if they did, I'll let you know. But in the past, Respondus does not work on Chromebooks. So you need to make some other arrangements for another device to take your exams and your, um, and your lab practicals. There are laptops that are loaned for free from the CCC library. They do run out. So if you want to borrow a laptop for the semester, do it right away. Go to the library and ask them if you can have a laptop. While you're at it, make sure, ask them, does it have Respondus software on it? If it doesn't have Respondus software on it, 
ask them to put it on there? Or how do you get it on there? Because you can't, you're not allowed to load anything onto the laptop that's owned by the college. Okay, so get that in your mind. And um, I think that's where I'm going to stop right now. It gives you a little bit of introduction of where you're going with this. The next thing you want to do is go click on the syllabus. And I made a video where you're going to go over that. Good luck. I'll see you soon.